Richard Johnson, thanks ever so much for joining us. A momentous day in the calendar year. We're here at the start of pre-season officially. Obviously winter training now behind us, which has all been done at Lords in the Indle School. Up at Merchant Taylors now, back on grass. What's the mood in the camp? Uh, it's cold. Um, it's uh, obviously we've taken a bit of a, a turn uh, cold this last couple of days. Uh, but yeah, the, the marquee is fantastic as usual. Um, the guys here do, do a brilliant job getting this ready for us. Um, we've had a, a good winter up, up to this point. I think we spoke about it in the last in interview. Everything's gone really well. We've done some really good work indoors. Um, and now it's obviously at that stage where we're trying to get that competitive edge now, uh, fine tune our games ready for the ready for the season. Um, we, we we talked a lot last year about how competitive we were going to make the marquee and we've done the same this year. Uh, green wickets, new balls, real challenge for the batters and the challenge for our bowlers to get it in the right areas. So uh, same as last year, we're, we're, we're putting them under real pressure in, in this part of the build up to our first game. It's a really obvious question, I guess, but two hard-fought draws against Nottinghamshire last year showed us what's kind of lying ahead for us, I guess, in Division 1. Um, you must have been extremely pleased, of course, with how we performed against Notts in those two games, but I guess every game is going to be that tough this year. How have you used winter to prepare the lads for that? Yeah, absolutely. And we, we use that with the players, that you know it's Notts every week. Um, and we've got to find a way of competing, not just to survive and, and, and draw a game at the end but to uh, get on the front foot and, and win those games um, and the you know we, we've got a varied experience in our squad we've got half our half our squad who would have or half our first 11 that would have uh, played first division cricket and we've got half the, that haven't you know batted or bowled in first division cricket so far so you know we don't want to make a massive thing of it but we also know it's 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 an upturn in in performance levels and what we did well last year we need to do for longer um, and I think that's that's what the good sides do they they compete every day for longer uh, and and that's how you get the results at the end of it um, pre-season and, and the winter we've we've worked hard on trying to keep that sort of mentality going we, we spoke a lot about our identity last year which we we talked about again this year which is ever evolving um, and we've looked to try and really work hard um, in the areas that we know we were a little bit weak last year um, and also the the sort of toughness side of it the the, the um, trying to get our batters and bowlers uh, through those tough periods and how we can still compete when we're fatigued or when we're mentally tired or physically tired so and we've done that all winter which has been great good good fun to watch a few of those sessions as well but um, no, it's been good absolutely I remember catching up with Mark Ramprakash about probably five years or so ago maybe more when he rejoined us as a batting cage and Ramp said to me one of the big things he wanted to bring into all of our net sessions was he wanted them to be competitive yeah. he said he couldn't remember a single time he'd gone out there in his career into the middle and it meant nothing so he wants our batters and bowlers to go into every net session with something on it with a bit of pressure applied to it that's one thing I've really noticed this year covering winter training is that every session counts yeah uh, during the winter we've we, we, we've done it in phases so pre-Christmas we worked a lot on the discovery stuff so new shots different ways of doing things technical techni technical mental whatever um, different areas that we can improve our games uh, without pressure and then after Christmas we put a bit a bit more on the pressure side of things ramped it up a little bit um, just give you an example we had a couple of sessions where the guys would have to bat for an hour against a 92 mile an hour bowling machine um, and fend it off their nose for an hour you know it's yeah. quite hard work we've had other sessions where we've made them uh, physically tired uh, so they had to run five twos and a single every over for an hour yeah. you know and so that last 20 minutes 25 minutes where you're really struggling physically um, you, you have to still be able to concentrate and you've still got to make good decisions and, and and that's what it's about that's the big thing ramps brings to the parties about the decision making the good decisions that you can make um, throughout a game when the pressure's on you, or you're, or you're tired or fatigued, and um, and, that, and that's what we've worked hard on. And, and, and this now at, at, at Merchant Taylors is more about bat v ball. The winter's been more about individual skills, and now we bring it together um, under the pressure of uh, bowler running in at you. Another big thing I've seen change this year, Jono, and I haven't seen it to be fair with previous coaches, is the attention to detail. Um, Coley, about a month ago, Alan Coleman, about six weeks ago, a month ago, strolled into the office and asked whether we had any brand new balls that we'll be using this year. So Peter Milan's been back home in South Africa over the winter, 
and we've sent him a couple of boxes of balls so that he can actually bat over there, facing the ball he'll face over here when he arrives with this in April. That's pretty impressive stuff. Um, is it? I think it is. <laughs> I thought it was normal. Um, no, it, it's, I, I think, look, the Duke is, is different to the Kookaburra. Uh, you need to, you, your eyes need to adjust it because you know it's going to move, you know it's going to seem. Uh, Robbo, Sam, before he left for Australia, took some new Kookaburras with him. Uh, Esky's worked with Kookaburra, uh, sorry, some new Dukes with him. Esky uh, has worked with some Dukes out in Australia as well um, during the Big Bash stuff. So I think, I think that's a normal, for me, that's a normal thing because it behaves differently and you've got to get used to that moving ball. The Kookaburra doesn't really seem. Um, I know Pete's coming back quite early as well, so I think he's around for the Surrey uh, uh, game. game uh, that was game three. Game John three. Yeah. Um, so I think he's around for that. And um, he was keen to get back and, and, and face you know bowlers on these wickets because they are different. Yeah. Another big change this year. Uh, you picked Tim Murta last year as your captain, huge legend of this club and the game, um, very senior player in that dressing room. Switch up this year, Mertz moves into a coaching role. Let's talk about him first of all. Obviously you worked with Tim throughout our Royal London campaign last year, saw what he had as a coach as he gets to the kind of latter end, shall we say, being polite of his career. Still got it to do with the ball, um, but he's moving more into a coaching role. What have you seen in Tim since he's taken on that dual role? And uh, what did you see in him last year that, that made you think he would be right for a coaching role. Yeah, look, firstly, obviously we lost uh, Jade, uh, went back to Surrey. Uh, Jade brought a lot of um, great qualities to our setup last year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, very sorry to see him go. Uh, couldn't think of a better person, to be honest, to, to, to fill in for Jade. Um, we, we know this is a sort of a bit untried and tested being a player coach in, in professional cricket. Um, it's something that we're going to have to communicate a lot about as the season goes on because obviously Mertz wants to play. Yeah, of course. And I get that because he's still a very fine bowler. Um, there are times where he's not going to play and obviously he then moves into the the bowling, mentoring sort of uh, area. I, I'm sure you, you know, you've spoken to Mertz. He, he, he knows what he can bring in terms of uh, mentoring and he's gone through every situation all these bowlers would have gone through in the past and he's a brilliant person to be able to yeah. chew the fat with and and talk through. He's learning all the time about the technical stuff. Uh, we're, we're going through a hell of a lot of the technical stuff and he's got to do his level threes and fours and stuff. Um, but he's, he's just someone who I feel comes in with a wealth of experience. He's got great knowledge. Um, the players love him, so he's got, he's got their ear. Um, and I think he can add massive value in that. And, and that's what he did for a, for a small period of time during the 50 over last year. The, the feedback on him from the players was, was great. Um, and, and having him around the group if he's not playing, um, I think adds, adds value to what we're trying to do. I know Jade left us obviously with a heavy heart. I guess that 70 grand pay rise going to Surrey probably helped soften the blow a bit. Um, obviously, Mertz stepping out of the captaincy role this year means that you have to find a replacement. You've elected Toby Rowland Jones as your man, very similar in many ways, leads the team unit, leads from the front. Um, greatly respected by all in the group, uh, obviously senior member in that play, uh, playing dressing room. Um, aside of that, if there is anything else, what have you seen in Toby that makes you think he's the man to lead us out there? Yeah, firstly, not having Mertz as captain was a big thing, you know, because he's led us fantastically yeah. well uh, last year, got, got us promoted, record. his record's incredible, you know, real tough decision. Um, to, to, to not have him next year but the right one because when you're when you're starting to get into the coaching part if you've got too many sort of hats in too many different jobs it make it, it muddies the water and makes it a bit yeah, difficult sure. to make decisions uh, Mertz wanted it but he understands the reasons behind it um, stepping in I, there could have been a few players yeah. um, Toby for me is just he's a born leader you know yeah, he he leads from the front, he's the, he's the guy that drives the game forward, very intelligent, understands the game very well, very good friends with Tim Murta, so you know, they'll work, I'm sure they'll work together as much as possible. But he has, he has just a, a way about him, um, Tobes. He, he, he commands respect um, and his performances back it up, so I couldn't, couldn't really see a better person really to take, take that man from you know, a, an unlucky Tim Murta. Couldn't agree with you more, mate. Um, Tough job, this head coach Malarkey. You've obviously got difficult decisions to make all the way. Um, 
not necessarily a tough decision on the on face value, um, but we've recently announced the signing of Keshav Maharaj from South Africa to come in and join us. Obviously, we spoke at length last year about you trying to develop the likes of Tillan and the likes of Luke. Uh, a big part of that, obviously, is getting Ian Salisbury in uh, into our coaching unit, who I know has been working very closely with them. And, keen to point out obviously the Souls is an assistant coach consultant coach to the group not yep. just here for, for bowling uh, but he's been working and will continue to work closely with those spinners but you've got Keshav in who's going to add an enormous amount of quality to the side but I guess that has a knock-on effect which is that difficult yeah. decision I was talking about and the tough conversations you've got to have has a knock-on effect because it means less opportunities I suppose this year for the likes of Tillan and Luke. Yeah look when you to do to develop young players, you need good senior players around yeah, them to absolutely. develop them. So if you look at our bowling unit, they've got the likes of Toby and Mertz around to, to, to get information from, to, to have a shoulder to cry on, to, to guide them through in the, in the difficult situations. Our batters have that with Rocky and um, Simo and, and, and Robbo. Um, our spinners don't have a senior uh, performer to, to look up to and, and, and to learn off and to, to gain valuable information from. So we know as a club, Luke Holman and Tillan are the future of this club. Um, having someone like um, Maharaj coming in and actually being that leading light that people can look up to and actually gain information from, I think is a massive thing. Yeah, um, yes, it can impact on the amount of games that young players can play, but I think the upside of that is how much information and how much they can gain from experience from him. Um, is invaluable um, and as a team having a having a world-class performer uh, in your ranks brings a confidence to everybody so my my message to the, the guys is is to fight for your place to to make sure that you're the next man in make sure that you're the next man to partner him if he's injured you're the next man in yep. uh, with Luke he's fighting for obviously um, a top six spot as well yeah because uh, he's a highly rated all-rounder and and it would surprise me if they didn't play enough enough cricket during the season um, and it would be to cling on to everything he says and everything he gives you to, to learn and, and gain experience from I suppose that's where we are fortunate really you, you mentioned obviously the seamers have those senior figures uh, the likes of Mertz and Rojo and Helmy now um, to lean upon the batters of course have got Rocky and Robbo up top um, it, that's the attitude I guess you need from the players to soak that up as sponges the likes of Luke and Tillan have got 15 years or more ahead of them as spinners in a career so if they can soak up that kind of information that someone like Maharaj can give them at this stage they're only going to get better for it Absolutely, and if you've got world-class performers coming in ahead of you at times, you know, as a young player you always feel that you're under pressure to perform, but if you've got someone of that ilk, of that quality coming in, then, then all you can do is, is try and uh, attach yourself to them and, and learn from them as, as yeah. best you possibly can. Um, everybody wants to play every game, of course. Um, in my own uh, personal experience of growing up as a youngster at Middlesex, I had you know, Angus Fraser and Neil Williams and, yeah. and, and Norman Cowens and these guys around me all the time. And they were looking at me as a, as a young upstart, but I was, I was ultimately trying to get their position, yeah. but they were helping me and supporting me and guiding me. And, and during games, they were the one taking up the slack. You know, yeah. if I had a bad spell, I was whipped off and Norman Cowens would come on or Angus Fraser would come on. And that, that's what senior players do. They, they take the responsibility, they take up the slack. And then for younger players that you're able to then uh, relax into the team a little bit, relax more into the squad and develop and learn your game a little bit more. On to the next three weeks, Johnny. We're in here in the indoor-outdoor supposedly heated marquee. It's freezing in there today, but the heating's coming. now on. Um, what are you expecting to get out of the next three weeks? Obviously, it all builds up to game one, which is here in three weeks' time against Kent. Uh, what are you expecting to achieve and how do things change up from here for the next three weeks? I think similar, as I said to last year, this is a progression. It's a progression to get us ready to play that first game. Um, and, you know, we will, we will go along the similar lines to what we did last year. It will be a tough environment. It's a performance environment. You know, there's no easy hits in there. There's no easy balls in there. It, it, it's tough. Um, and that is to switch you on as a player, but also switch you on mentally as a player to be ready for that first championship. Well, I've seen Helmy enjoying it. He's been bumping the batsman in there. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he should be pitching it up. He's a green seamer. <laughs> <laughs> this is very true. Right, Johnny, that's me done question wise. Before we go, uh, I want to turn something over to those watching uh, and we'll put something up on the website about this. You're very keen not only to hear my inanely dull questions each month, but you're very keen to hear from members, uh, which I think is a credit to you. It's, we're a members club. It's important that we have information given out to members, which is the purpose of doing these. But if any members out there have got any questions that they want to put to you, you'd be more than happy to answer them. Absolutely. Uh, we discussed this at the end of last year. I think it's something that I think is really important, keeping the members in the loop of what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it isn't always uh, accessible. So if there are questions out there that, that people want to know stuff, then we will be answering them as, as openly and honestly as we, as we possibly can. Yeah. Good, I might have to apply a filter to some of those if we don't start the season as well as we hoped, but we'll see where we go. Uh, anyone who has any questions, please email them in to me at socialmedia at middlesexccc.com. at socialmedia at middlesexccc.com and I'll put them to the big man here. John A, thanks as always for your time, it's a pleasure. First time standing up interviewing, I'm conscious of my side on profile, I could probably do with losing a few pounds before the season gets going. Yeah, you should have had your back to the camera, I think. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Pleasure as always. No worries. Pleasure.